Hello, ho, ho, folks. I'm Santanon, and this is the only news that matters. Today, I have got to talk about this guy, Alexander Litvinenko. Litvinenko. Wait, how do you say it? Litvinenko. Thank you. I'll just call him Alex. This story has everything double agents, spy stuff, assassinations, government corruption, Russian YouTubers, the fall of the USSR, Bill Hader, radioactive sushi, the rise of the Russian Federation, radioactive drain pipes, the rise of Vladimir Putin, radioactive coffins, MI6 British secret intelligence, Radioactive hospital rooms, poisonings, radioactive planes and hotels, Scotland Yard, radioactive teapots. It's got everything. Are you excited? Because I am. All right, let me get started. One day in England, this guy named Edwin Carter came into the hospital. He had major stomach problems. He was puking. He was shitting. He couldn't walk. Oh yeah, and his esophagus was covered in ulcers. He could barely swallow or talk. He kept telling the medical staff that he had been poisoned by the Russian government. They laughed at him. Then somebody must have taken him seriously because Scotland Yard showed up. Well, they showed up two weeks later. They waited two weeks and then this dude who's showing signs of radiation poisoning is yelling about how Putin had him poisoned and they wait two weeks but they showed up and Scotland Yard was all hello hello nurse is he telling the truth or is he hallucinating cause of the dying or something and the nurse was all like you're the detective not me and then got them to contact a guy from MI6 and for those of you who haven't seen James Bond MI6 is the British CIA thingy. Anyways, the dude from MI6 shows up and is like, Hello, I'm with MI6 and my name is Martin. Oh, that guy over there, that ain't Edward, that's Alex over there. He's former KGB and FSB, and now he's a British citizen, he is, and he's been advising us on Russian organized crime. Turns out Edwin's real name is Alexander Lit Litvinenko. Vinenko. Litvinenko. Thanks again. And Alex was like, Thelium, the Ruskies, they poisoned me with thelium. Test me, test my blood. It also turns out this Alexander guy is a former KGB agent. And then after the fall of the USSR, he worked for the Russian Federation's Federal Security Service, or FSB for short. You figure it'd be Federal Security Bureau, not Federal Security Service with the initials FSB, but what the fuck do I know? Basically, Alexander just started yapping when he was still with the FSB. He said he was ordered by Putin to kill Boris Berezovsky, Zovsky, how do you say that one? Berezovsky. Thank you. He was ordered to kill that guy. He held a press conference about it and everything. Не в конституционных целях безопасности государства и личности, а в своих частных политических и меркантильных целях. Putin and the rest of the supposed corrupt Russian government guys that Alex just threw under the bus at that press conference were not happy. He was jailed for years. Well, actually just a year. Then somehow he was able to escape to Great Britain and get political asylum. And while in England, 
Alex kept yapping, saying Putin and his cronies were behind the assassination of certain journalists, and they were behind terrorist attacks involving schools and theaters, and he was like, You know former Italian Prime Minister Romanov Prodi, 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 however you say it, yeah, yeah, he is the current president of the European Commission, he is KGB, he worked for KGB, and Putin is also involved with drug running in Russia and he's a pedophile, etc, etc. And the Russian Federation were not happy with Alexander at all. He pissed a bunch of people off. And then Alexander was warned multiple times that his life was in danger. But what could the Russians do? They were in Russia. He was in England. Well, they fucked his mother. Just kidding. The Russian government tried him in absentia for high treason. He was sentenced to three years. Or, you know, since he wasn't in the country, maybe they passed a secret death penalty or something. So basically, all this drama was going down. Then Alexander shows symptoms of extreme thallium poisoning. His hair fell out, his wife takes pictures, and he's like, I want the people to see what they did to me. Or some shit. And he starts reviewing his past few weeks, going over it with Scotland Yard. He's like, I went to sushi at Itsu Sushi Bar with this weird ass Mario guy. To me, Mario! Woohoo! So, Scotland Yard. Go out and find Mario Scaramella. They thought maybe Mario had poisoned Alexander. Or maybe Mario himself was poisoned and through his sweat or some shit, he had irradiated and poisoned Alexander as well. Turns out, no. Mario's fine. <laughs> Turns out he has nothing to do with it either. But they found out through examining a liter of Alex's piss that Alex had been poisoned with something called Polonium-210. Which is pretty fucking deadly. So, they get these dirt devil looking things that can detect Polonium. And they sweep Itsu Sushi Bar. It was immaculately clean. But, a table did come up positive for Polonium, but not the one Alex said him and Mario were sitting at. Then Alex told Scotland Yard, Oh yeah, two weeks ago I met up with some old friends from KGB slash FSB at Itsu Sushi. We ate. It was delicious. And Scotland Yard asked, Who the fuck did you eat with? And Alex said, Andre Lugavoy and Dmitry Kovtun. And Scotland Yard was like, Why didn't you tell us this sooner? And Alex was like, I was going to, but I couldn't decide whether to tell you that first, or that a week or so after the sushi with the KGB buddies, we had some nasty tasting tea at the hotel, and they were both acting sus. So Scotland Yard immediately started backtracking to find Lugavoy and Cofton. Polonium was found in the teapot at the hotel, which implies the hotel did not properly wash their dishes, by the way. I don't want to get into that, but just an interesting fact I thought I'd throw in. They found Polonium in Lugavoy and Cofton's hotel rooms, specifically in Lugavoy's room, like in the drain in the bathroom, was supposedly chalked full of Polonium. They claim that he probably poured it down the sink after one of the many attempts on Alex's life. The planes that Lugavoy and Cofton rode in tested positive for polonium. Basically everywhere Lugavoy, Cofton, or Alex went, there was a radioactive trail. And by poisoning Alex, those two had either knowingly or unknowingly exposed innocent people to the radiation of the polonium. The populace of England was in a panic, but no one got sick or died or anything. Well, no one except Alexander Litvinenko. Hey! I said it right! I said his name right! Oh, oh, yeah, somber time. Um, we're talking about death. Sorry, sorry. 
Anyways, Alex passed on due to a heart attack. And the doctors and nurses, they worked on him for like 30 minutes straight. And he came back to life and then immediately fell into a coma. Then he died the next day of another heart attack. Then he came back again! Just, just kidding. He, he was actually dead this time. So, Scotland Yard had some work to do. They somehow figured out that the polonium used was from someplace near Chernobyl in Russia called Cheblik. Chebliskism. How do you say this one? Chebliskism. Thanks. But Scotland Yard still needed to track down Lugavoy and Cofton. But Cofton and Lugavoy were in Russia. So England was like, Hello Russia, old pal. Could uh, you lend us Lugavoy and Cofton? So we may try them for murder, pretty please. Pip pip cheerio. And Russia was all, Ma, bro. So England was like, Well, how about if we send some of our investigators over there to question Lugavoy and Kofton? And Russia was all, Yeah, I guess, whatever, do what you want. And so these Scotland Yard dope arenos hop on a plane, fly to Russia to investigate a poisoning. By the way, by this point, everyone knows it's a poisoning. It's public. And they knew Alex had been poisoned through food and drink. And they were openly blaming the Russian government for sponsoring it. And the Russians knew that they were being blamed. And they knew Scotland Yard was coming. And then these investigators are trying to pin this on Russia while in Russia investigating a poisoning and they're going to eat and drink? That makes no sense. Pack a lunch for God's sakes. Needless to say, the Scotland Yard guys got the shits. Early the next morning, I was to accompany him back to the general prosecutor's office. office. We were, we were off for tea. Tea, tea. tea. I had no hesitation in saying yes, I'll have, I'll have a cup of tea please. So, so I had, I had the cup of tea. Uh, we left. I started, I started to feel a little uncomfortable and not wanting to too, put too fine a point on it. I had the shits. They're convinced that they were lightly poisoned. I have no doubt in my mind that we were probably poisoned. poisoned. But something like gastroenteritis. I think they're full of shit. Literally and figuratively. But anyways, they finally have a meeting with Cofton after shitting their brains out and they had to jump through a bunch of hoops to meet with him. Cofton was in a hospital built for radiation stuff. Like literally, he was in a hospital that was built after the Chernobyl disaster. The Scotland Yard dopes come in and there's a dude in a hospital bed, basically in a hazmat suit, wearing a mask and all the investigators can see are his eyes. They interview him. They don't know if it's really him or not. Scotland Yard claims they were not allowed to record the conversation, so they had to rely on the Russian government to record the conversation. I smell something fishy. Basically, the authorities in Russia cut the meeting short because Cofton was supposedly hella sick. In fact, after Scotland Yard left, Cofton supposedly fell into a coma and Scotland Yard was never able to interview him again. Hours after giving evidence to investigators in Moscow today, Mr. Cofton reportedly fell into a coma and is in a critical condition from radiation poisoning. And they didn't get anything from the first interview, and now they were being told they couldn't meet with Lugavoy, so they were pretty fucked. But then at the last minute, the Russians were like, No, nah, fuck it, you can talk to him, but, but... There's always a but. But, the interview has to be in Russian. Lugavoy cannot speak English. And just like last time, we recorded, you can't record it. We give you copy of mixtape afterwards. It's gonna be fire. He's in the hospital though, cause he's so super sick. So the interview has to be really short, okay? So, the Scotland Yard guys said Lugavoy looked fine. They said that Lugavoy was wearing regular clothes and it looked like he had just walked in off the street. They conducted their interview. They claimed they got a lot of great info. And then at the end of the interview, after using the interpreter the entire time, Lugavoy smiled and said, Good luck on your investigation. And then walked out like a boss. When Scotland Yard got back to England, turns out they didn't get the full copy of the interview with Lugavoy. 
They claim they had all this great info and the Russians purposely sabotaged them. I don't know why, but in every bit of research I've done, all I can find are claims of great info on those missing tapes. The detectives never say what info they actually got. I don't know what's up with that. Maybe they can't say what it is because it's some sort of British anti-free speech law like they have over there. Or maybe it's because it didn't happen. Makes you think. So England got pissed. Well, the, the English public got pissed. People wanted justice. Scotland Yard wanted justice. Alex's family wanted justice. But to keep trade relations good between the countries, nothing was done until 2014. During that time, I assume Kaufton died or got better or something, who knows. Lugavoy became a member of Russian parliament and therefore is somehow now immune to prosecution. And then England held a public inquiry and some stuffy old British judge dude decided, yes, Putin is to blame. And everyone was happy, even though justice wasn't served. And that whole story seems weird. It just smells of bullshit and fishiness. The whole story seems like a Hollywood script. In fact, Lugavoy himself said so. Поэтому, вот послушайте, обратитесь к голливудским фильмам и к вашим фильмам про Джеймса Бонда. Вы же сами там такого порой напридумываете. Ну вот, покопайтесь внутри себя, уважаемые британцы. I don't think the official story is the real official story. See, I have a source that's close to Russian politics. 2020, so uh, kind of messed up on a deadline there. No, no, not that guy. He's a CIA shill. He even admitted to it in a video he did recently. See, I'm a proud patriot. Born and raised right here in America. That's why I do what I do. I expose the truth because I love this country. However, my dad is well I'm the illegitimate son of a Waffle House waitress and the viceroy to the principality of Liechtenstein I'm an American my father is an American my mother is an American my godfather is the viceroy of the principality of Liechtenstein yes my dad is Paul Rudd's godfather and my dad is really good friends with Putin they hang out all the time, and Putin is the only non-corrupt politician in Russia's history, both Soviet history and Russian Federation history, and even, you know, the monarchy period under the Tsars. All of them were corrupt, except Putin. See, after World War II, the Western powers took all the credit for winning. England was like, We did it! We alone won the war, big, big cheerio! And America was having ticker tape parades and chanting, USA, USA, and being the best country ever. But everyone in the West was also scared of Russia. Because without Russia, we'd all be speaking German right now, if you know what I mean. And they were scared of that power. And they were also scared because Russia was communist. And everyone should have been scared, because communism will rape you, then it will kill you, and then it will rape your corpse, and that's a scientific fact. My Uncle Sam actually told me that, so it's gotta be true. But then the wall fell, and the USSR dissolved, and the anti-Russian feelings continued even after Putin got in power and started cleaning up the Russian government. There was still just this prejudice of anti Russian bullshit. So England and America were super weary of anything Russian. Then Alexander shows up and to the public he looked like a whistleblower but behind the scenes he was attempting a bloodless coup against the Russian Federation and Putin. The CIA and MI6 were secretly working with Alex sending him scripts from Hollywood to read at that historic press conference. Alex, along with the CIA and MI6, were hoping that the Russian people would believe the lies and revolt and elect Alex as a leader. Then the West would have a puppet. But it didn't work, so America said, Fuck this noise! and backed out. But the British were still invested. I mean, they had a lot of time and money invested in this. And they got to read those cool Hollywood scripts, and you know, we all knew British movies suck. So, so... MI6 got Alex and his family out of Russia and paid him monthly to continue spouting his Hollywood written lies. But they were paying him to do it from England this time so he'd be safe and not go to prison. But it wasn't working because no one really cared. They had video games and 
television. Why the fuck would they care what this dude was saying about some country they don't live in? So they set up this whole plot to make it look like Alex had this cinematic and tragic death. They made him a character that you couldn't help but love and root for. A martyr that you would want to have justice for. See, let's take a look at that photo his wife took up. Look familiar? He looks exactly like NoHo Hank from HBO's hit show Barry. I know what you're thinking, but stay with me. MI6 had a, had a vested interest in making Russia and Putin look bad because MI6 hates freedom because they're British and all British people hate freedom. They orchestrated this whole thing and then when Alex died, they gave him another new identity. This time, they gave him the identity as an actor born in Boston in 1983. And because MI6 works for the Royals, aka the Illuminati, aka the NWO, they were able to use British Royal Reptilian technology to de-ageify Alex and make him younger. And since the Illuminati controls Hollywood, they made Bill Hader write a hit television show and cast Alex in the role as No-Ho Hank and made him a beloved character who's worth winning a lot of awards for. And they did all of this to make Vladimir Putin look bad. What a shame. Shame on you, Hollywood. Shame on you, Bill Hader. Shame on you, Scotland Yard. Shame on you, Blazers. Shame on you, Edwin Carter, aka Alexander Levin Yinko, however the fuck you say your name. Nathan Yinko. AKA Anthony Kerrigan, aka Noho Hank. Shame on you. Shame on you all. Shame on you, Illuminati. Anyways, that's it for this week, folks. Thanks for tuning in. God bless and hell Santa. The only news that matters is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. Promotional consideration provided by Itsu Sushi, located in Piccadilly. Since you watched this episode, you know that that was a false flag attack, and our restaurant was not the scene of a horrific poisoning. Visit Itsu Sushi online for more details. It was delicious. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Anyways guys, I guess that is going to be pretty much it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you guys did, please make sure to slap that like on it. It was delicious.